Hope everybody's doing well. Khaled Iwamura here from inhalton.com, in Saga, in Brampton, in the Hammer. I hope everybody's doing well. We're going to have Marianne Mead Ward, the mayor of Burlington, on with me any second now. Talking about everything Burlington, especially the, uh, the pandemic, COVID, just uh, everything. Um, we've gotten questions from uh you the viewers throughout the day so i'll be asking those questions and uh yeah i hope everybody's doing well let's see if she's on and we're gonna have marianne mead ward the mayor of burlington on with me any second now there she is how you doing hello good how are you good i feel like a week <laughs> you know what? Every day feels like a month. I couldn't believe it when I looked at my calendar yesterday, and it's like, oh my god, it's only Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, it's a little too honest. Yeah. <laughs> no, yesterday I, I was freaking that it was Tuesday, and today it's only Wednesday. And anyways, how's your day been? Has it been crazy as usual? It's it uh, it's been good actually. I just got back from a long walk with my dog, so okay. I had a bit of a break between. Um, between meetings unusually so I got out and got some sunshine and went down to the lake and, and it was awesome yeah good day today it's a beautiful day actually it's gorgeous yeah. out there yeah. yeah um a lot of questions uh let's start off with the broken record question I apologize I have to do it every week when, when are we getting out of lockdown <laughs> February 10th is around the corner right yeah. so and uh, yeah it's like and the numbers are going down obviously the tests are going down as well so but uh, February 10th, do you think Halton will open up kind of stage red or code red or whatever you guys call it? Uh, it's a good question. I, I've always said, uh, well, in the last last couple of weeks that we've had this call, the the indicators are greater than just the, the single public health unit, which is Halton Public Health. And we are doing awesome. So keep up the good work out there, everybody, especially in Burlington. Our numbers are uh, coming way down. You know, infection rates are down. It's really looking good, uh, but we know we have to look at health indicators across the entire GTHA from a health and hospital sector perspective. So the good news is the additional beds that have been added to the east of us in those hot spots, uh, 500 and, and some odd, uh, that will really help. Uh, so really until we kind of get a handle on the the folks that need hospitalization and that we don't overwhelm our hospital. And that again is region wide. Nobody's probably coming out of lockdown. So having said that the numbers in the hot spots are coming down too. So it's all yeah. going in the right direction. Uh, keep up the good work. We don't want to take the pedal off the metal just yet. So, you know, we'll, uh, I don't know when we're next, if we're scheduled right before the 10th, but I'm sure we'll talk about that again. Maybe we'll know more by then Hopefully. about whether it's going to be extended or not. Uh, the hot topic last week was uh, big box stores and are they getting fined and are they getting ticketed? Um, have, have, have big box stores been getting fined and ticketed in Burlington or Halton? Big blitz coming. So that's that's been handled and coordinated actually at the provincial level. So okay. it's their it's their folks that have been doing the uh, coming out to various regions and Halton region either just happened or is is coming up this weekend. So <laughs> be, be forewarned. Uh, don't overcrowd. And you know online ordering works like a dream. So it actually saves you a lot of time if you can you know if you can afford the extra couple of bucks to you know, and the trade off is you don't have to pay your own gas money or whatever it is, transit fares to get there. Um, it's not that much to, to order delivery. So true. To um, degree you can stay home, uh, order online. If you have to go do curbside uh, pickup, and that should really help with minimizing crowds anywhere. True. I'm going to have to admit that uh, I had to get my tires done. And uh, the only Costco that had an appointment, uh, open was Burlington and I oh couldn't boy. believe there was a line, there was a lineup around the building like it was crazy for tires oh not, for tire, you... not for tires oh, just just, just yeah, not for tires not for tires wow I'm surprised 
Yeah, so I guess well, the- but you know, the good news is about a lineup is that those folks, if they're actually distancing in the lineup, they're not crowding inside the store. So yes, it's a lot of people, but if it's a big store and they have capacity and they're really controlling the number of people inside, and you're be- if you're safe lining up, if you're safe inside, then that's probably a, a good sign rather than you know, you you drive by and there's nobody, but if you were to walk in, uh, see lots of folks there. So it looks like they're taking very seriously the capacity limits, which is good. True. I guess I'll have online a- Online ordering, talk. people. Yeah. Online ordering. <laughs> Everything else we get, I just don't know how to change tires. Yet, but, yeah, uh, I don't either. I, I don't even put air in my tires. It's the one thing oh, wow. I won't do. So. <laughs> um, in, uh, I talked to the other mayors and- uh, you know, the, um, the bylaw officers have had very interesting adventures in regards to uh, speak easies to, to like online, not online, but like uh, poker and, and gambling places that they have to shut down, parties, hookah bars and stuff like that. Are there any uh, type of um, bylaw adventures that <laughs> you can talk about? We're very, we are very boring in Burlington oh, and we follow the rules. <laughs> what I am concerned about though is I do hear stories about people still traveling, traveling out of, uh, out of the province, traveling out of the country for holidays, uh, even after the Premier and the Prime Minister have said really, you know, cancel your trips. And there is so much to do right here in the whole GTA within a fairly easy drive for people or you know in some cases right outside your front door i can walk down to a spectacular waterfront you know three minutes from my house and uh you know within burlington there's a park within uh about 10 minutes of every home so you know we've left our recreation facilities open uh, our outdoor facilities because that you know it's ventilated people can stay six feet apart it's one of the safest uh, places to enjoy recreation so our toboggan hills our dog parks our skating rinks they're all open and we do control numbers we do have people out to make sure it's safe we have signs to encourage people you know when you're out please stay six feet away from anyone you don't live with but we've ha- we've kept that open and a lot of municipalities around us have closed those so so we are saying to folks please stay home don't don't travel don't go on holiday don't you know uh, go to another community enjoy what your what Burlington has to offer um, we've got the spectacular conservation Halton parks they have done an amazing sorry that that's my my battery's running low I may have to plug in here okay um, no you know, they've done an amazing, out. yeah, sorry, I can't, do you want me to do that? Okay, just give me a second. We've got all the time for rub. Okay. <laughs> this is about as real as it gets, right? Yeah, all right. Uh, okay, and I'm going to have to upset <laughs> all of this nice, uh... <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> this is just too funny. Okay. Oh my goodness, I'm going to have to rejig all this here uh, for you (laughs) we'll just get it sorted anyways um i may have to hold this because my of course my uh you know what i'm just gonna i'm just gonna do this we're just gonna have we're just gonna make it real here um sorry for the extreme close-up um anyways uh yeah, lots of other places have closed these amenities. And, uh, you know, Conservation Halton has put lights in their park, uh, like a lit trail. It's absolutely spectacular. They've got a uh, snowshoe that you can rent uh, to go up there and walk around. It, it is really beautiful. So there's, you know, there's no reason for people to put themselves at risk uh, or, or their families or people that they're visiting at risk by traveling outside the, the province or the country. Let, let me ask you this then, because I mean, obviously, it, we're at a stay at home order, but you could still go to Expedia and buy a trip to Cancun if you wanted to and mm, legally. Sure you can. Right? I mean, so at the end of the day, I mean, I, I know this is not you know, municipal jurisdiction, but I mean, should the FETs close down the airports for international they've gotta, travel? They've, they've got to look at that, right? If, they, if they're really serious, if what their health indicators are telling them, if the science is telling them that travel is the source of spread and and more important, the source of new variants, which are 
which are worse than, you know, believe it or not, COVID-19, if that yeah. is what uh, it, they are seeing, then they've got to take measures. And, and the public mood is behind additional restrictions to keep people healthy and safe. And what we don't want to have happen is a couple of things. We don't want this extended closure because action wasn't taken quick enough and the economy stays in ruins. We don't want to have our healthcare system overwhelmed because people can't, uh, because, and we've had to cancel surgeries. Then we have a whole other type of health pandemic coming right in along the side. And what we, we, we really don't want <clears throat> a continued closure uh, that, that will affect people's mental health. People are afraid, people, you know, the nerves are afraid. People are really struggling. We've been at this a year. And if, if action isn't taken to stop it from coming into the country, we're in this for a lot longer. Sure. So I, I think people, you know, we saw the GTHA mayors and chairs were represented around that table by Halton Regional Chair, uh, you know, ask for more travel restrictions. Right, you heard the mayors ask for that. Sure. Um, let's talk about sick pay. And I know uh, the GTHA mayors have been talking about sick pay, sick pay. Uh, but I'm gonna ask it a different way, just in regards to because in Mississauga we had this massive workplace outbreak uh, at the Canada Post um, facility. Um, and over 350 people got sent home. I think over 230 people had COVID-19. They offer sick pay, right? And this still happened, right? So is this, you know, as much as I know it will help, right? But is this the answer? Because, I mean, at the end of the day, the biggest workplace outbreak in Peel, they offered sick pay. And this, so I don't know what the, what the sick pay of that specific incident was, but I can tell you typically sick pay is about 500 bucks a week. Okay. That's nowhere near what, what a lot of people are making. And they can't, what, what you're asking to them to do is take a pay cut to sure. recover. And so the sick, na sick pay needs to reflect, it needs to be true time off at your current salary. And that was one of the things that we addressed. If we want essential work to continue, we need to protect essential workers. Sure. I mean, and, and part of the way that we do that is when they get sick, that they stay home paid leave, not the you know paltry sick pay that is currently offered. That, that's exactly why people aren't staying home. True. They can't afford a pay cut. So they shouldn't have to choose between paying the rent and putting food on the table and meeting their mortgage and, and going to work. And so, so people are rational They'll look at their budget and they'll make their choices that way. And then, and then try to take precautions. I'm sure they all were trying their best, uh, but look, look what happened. And that's exactly a result of inadequate sick pay and sick leave. Have you heard from uh, the province or the feds in regards to uh, adequate sick pay? Well, they're, we've got their attention. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they're, they're certainly aware that it's an issue. It's a bit of a political hot potato where, you know, instead of arguing about what the top up should be, the discussion has so far been about whose jurisdiction it falls under. At the end of the day, the community just wants to get it done. And so we're just asking the feds and the province come together, sort it out, figure it out, because we need these essential workers protected and we need the, the essential work to continue. Sure. Uh, this week, City Council unanimously approved a resolution to extend funding to the Digital Main Street Program to support local businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? So that was a program, thank you very much to the province, we appreciate that, uh, to help businesses go, uh, you know, port their business to an online pr platform. And it's amazing how many businesses weren't already in that space uh, when, you know, when this pandemic started, but a lot of them weren't. So uh, we said, look, don't end it now. We've had huge uptake in Burlington. Uh, we, you know, our Burlington Economic Development hired some staff to help people design websites, you know, figure out the technology for whatever it was, online ordering or, 
you know, any of the, you know, online booking appointment systems, whatever it was. And so uh, we're, we're actually, our ECDEV is counting on <laughs> the province extending that. We've, they've kept those folks on. We're continuing to help those businesses. So even though the funding has uh, or imminently will run out, the service is continuing at our ECDEV and we just hope the province will be there for us. We, we think they, they will. Um, you know, really, uh, I think the, the message that, uh, you know, the public supports restrictions, but you can't have restrictions without support. And that supports to businesses, supports to individuals, like we've been talking about with sick leave. Uh, you can't just leave people hanging when you shut down the economy. True. Uh, is your arm okay? Are you holding the phone? I am. I'm <laughs> holding my iPad. I know, it's a little wonky today. I'm sorry I'm about that. Sorry, your Thanks, shoulder. Dear. <laughs> I've got it kind of resting on my hand, but okay. it's, uh, oh, so, just, it's just super real today. <laughs> <laughs> um, a report came out that said that the, the province is actually sitting on about $6.5 billion mm. that they haven't yet. Uh, yes, yeah, what are your thoughts on that? And re uh, what would you like them to spend the money on? Well, we will be making an ask for uh, our bottom line in 2022. Our our hole in our 2022 budget is uh, $18 million. We, through cost-cutting measures, as well as uh, carryover of some funds from 2020, thank you uh, for those as well to the province, we really appreciate that. Uh, we still have, and, and other measures that we've taken, we still have a roughly $3 million hole. That's just us. And so, uh, you know, we, we will be applying for the second round of Safe Restart. We've advocated, of course, that the government continue that program, but really that money needs to be deployed across the board. It's, it's to help people, help businesses, help governments, help services. Let's get the money into the hands of the people that need it. True. Um, the Alcohol and Gaming Commission of Ontario uh, received an application for the 20th cannabis store in Burlington. Uh, yes. Is Burlington per capita the? Do they have the most <laughs> cannabis stores I'm, per capita? I'm, I'm guessing we do. <laughs> uh, we also have a lot of uh, dental offices and nail salons, so you'll have great nails, great teeth, and an opportunity to get some recreational cannabis. <laughs> uh, but you know what? This is a legitimate business, and I know I know people have uh, some strong feelings about whether any other person should actually be using cannabis. Uh, it's a legitimate business. It's a legal operation, no different from the LCBO, no different from the beer store. We have had zero complaints, zero police calls, no underage, nobody getting their license yanked. So they are legitimate operators. And in fact, what we've seen in some of our older aging plazas, some storefronts that have been vacant and derelict for ages are now being gussied up and, and um, turned into this business. And I would much rather people, if they're going to uh, use cannabis, I'd much rather that they get it from a legitimate controlled source where they can go in and learn about the product, learn about the strength, of it, make an educated decision rather than getting it off the street where who knows what's in it. And that was one of the reasons why from the very beginning, I supported uh, bringing stores to Burlington. We need to provide a legal, safe way for people who are going to use this product anyway, uh, to be able to find a place uh, to get it. And the other thing I'm gonna say is that Burlington Council looked at the provincial guidelines. We said, look, uh, they're, they're not enough. Uh, so we think uh, distance sh separators should be uh, more than 500. We think there should be a longer list of sensitive uses that they shouldn't be close to and a range of other things. And so we put together our own guidelines. They are not enforceable by law. However, every time there's an application, we have a 10 day window to comment as a municipality about whether or not we think the uh, the location and the application uh, should be approved. Of, of the 17, sorry, of the 20 now, 17 have fully met our own guidelines. Okay. There's only three that haven't. They were still approved, unfortunately, but we did put objection letters in to those three. 
uh, but but that's good news too. So zero complaints, 17 comply. And, and the other thing that's important to note is that not all of those have been opened, right? So there's a number of steps you have to go through. You have to apply for your license, you have to get it, but then you have to, um, you know, you have to actually open your store and there's still some other oversight. So not, there's only, a, I think about eight that are up and running, somewhere in that neighborhood, about half. Uh, objections, would they be kind of like closer to, like close to schools? What kind of objections? Yeah. Would they be? Okay. One, one that comes to mind uh, right away was, it was uh, very close to uh, M.M. Robinson High School. Having said that, as some folks pointed out, it was right beside the LCBO, which was yeah. also close yeah. to, to M.M. Robinson, right? So, you know, so we still put in our objection. We did have concerns about a secondary market uh, at the school. People of age are able to procure that going to the school. That was our concern, of course. Um, so, you know, we didn't we didn't win that one, uh, but there's no kids in schools right now anyway. <laughs> so, <clears throat> uh, what are your thoughts on the um, the kind of the bad news about the vaccination or vaccines and stuff like that? Uh, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, I, I've been sorry, I've been reading. Uh, I read an article today that there's a good chance that Canada might not see them till like fully till mid 2022. Well, I, I remember my very first briefing uh, with General Hillier, who's the chair of the Provincial COVID Vaccination Task Force, and he kind of sort of level set some expectations in, in my mind. And he said, you look, uh, and that was before we knew about the problems with the supply, by the way, but he kind of said, look, it's going to take till the fall to get everybody vaccinated who wants to be vaccinated. It's a massive undertaking across the country. And so that has always kind of been in the back of my mind that we're looking, you know, September, October before, uh, you know, the general public. Uh, absolutely, we need to focus on the high priority and most vulnerable populations, our frontline workers, our essential workers and so forth. And that's exactly what's happening. So, uh, but having said that now, that timeline uh, is, is gotten delayed. And so, you know, we at the Halton region unanimously passed a resolution last week asking the federal government to essentially move heaven and earth to make sure that we get our fair share globally of vaccinations and to speed up the supply. Okay. I'm going to get to some uh, viewer questions here or Instagram viewer questions. Um, and I'm just going to read them as, as they type them here. Uh, oh, okay. Great. <laughs> <laughs> take out the swear words. <laughs> no, I can, I can, nobody swore. There's less swearing here than, than it did in there. So, uh, why isn't the new Palmer Trail being plowed like the other paths in Heaton? Is in Heaton Forest, yeah. So, um, actually, if you, if you, uh, whoever sent that in, if you are actually watching, please email me at mayor at burlington.ca, and we will find out. This council over several years, uh, starting actually with the last city council, we did put more money into plowing trails across the city because we recognize how important it is. There, was that, there wasn't that funding, uh, certainly when I joined uh, mm -hmm. council. So we, we plow hydro paths, we plow the trails that lead into schools, uh, and we're slowly you know, getting, getting all of them added to the list. So... Um, you know, I, I, I thought Palmer was on the list, but, you know, follow up with my office and we'll get a better answer for you. Okay, perfect. Um, this is a school, more of a schooling question. So uh, why are we keeping Halton schools shut down when cases are so low in Burlington? Well, that's a great question. And I did ask that recently of uh, some of our public health officials. And uh, I asked it actually of the Minister of Health. I was at the uh, Rural Ontario Municipal Association Conference and had a delegation with her and we, um, a regional delegation. So myself, uh, Gary Carr, who's the chair of regional council and Colin Best, who's our uh, representative on um, Association of Municipalities of Ontario. So we, uh, we asked about vaccines. We encouraged them to press the government to, uh, to get more vaccinations. But we also asked about, you know, uh, when can when can schools open? Uh, I also met with uh, Minister Lecce, same group of folks, uh, regional delegation. We asked uh, specifically asked him, um, 
you know, can Halton schools open? Because schools are a little different than businesses. Uh, you know, people don't school shop if, it, you know, the way they would if, if every business is closed in Mississauga, but we're open in Burlington, they're going to come here. It's not the same uh, with schools. You're enrolled in a, in a particular district. So, you know, I wondered if that was maybe a, a, an argument to if our, you know, public health unit numbers are down, could schools open earlier? And um, he said they're looking at a number of health indicators uh, before making that decision. He didn't, you know, commit to open or, or keep them closed. Uh, but we certainly made the case that maybe on that one area of schools, which have limited uh, participation to a region, maybe the public health uh, unit level of, of health evidence is the right one. He did make the point though, that there are people that uh, work in other areas that would have kids in the school so that the spread could happen that way, right? Oh. Uh, families, you know, we know that half our population leave Burlington to go to work and we get an influx of, of folks from other areas doing jobs in Burlington. So that that's the issue. It's at a household level where you have mom and dad or mom and mom or dad and dad off uh, working uh, in some other jurisdiction and coming home if they, uh, you know, they can, they can potentially, uh, you know, can go through a family and that's how how it spread. So longer answer than you were looking for, but it's, it's not as easy as, uh, as I was hoping. Um, okay. So I, I, you know, I appreciated that answer uh, from the minister, but um, I think probably the safest thing to say is that until the numbers get below that 1000 a day, which is kind of what they've been looking for across Ontario, that we're still going to be in some level of restriction. Okay. Um, and another question here, and I don't even know if this is a thing, but uh, is water down going to be taken over by Burlington? Is that even a thing? Like <laughs> oh, wow. I haven't talked about that since the election two years ago. Is that uh, a thing? No, the, the, the former mayor. Um, uh, so development, as you know, was a, a huge issue, if not the issue in the last municipal election. And I ran on a platform of reasonable development, directing growth where it should go, uh, protecting established neighborhoods and so forth. Um, the, the former mayor who I was running against uh, suggested that maybe we take over Waterdown and direct our growth there and that's how we solve it. Um, without talking to Waterdown, <laughs> without talking to Hamilton, uh, I remember talking to Fred that day and uh, the day after, well, shortly after I was elected, I, you know, we talked to each other and congratulated each other and so forth. And I said, Fred, just so you know, I have no intention of taking over water down. He said, good, then I won't have to invade Aldershot. <laughs> so, he was a good sport about it, but no, there mm -hmm. are no zero discussions uh, about that. Although I have heard from some folks in water down that they like our tax rate uh, better in Burlington. It's much lower than our property tax rate, much lower than Hamilton. And don't you don't you guys clear the sidewalks when it snows and Hamilton we doesn't? We do. Yes, yeah. we do. <laughs> we, we, <laughs> lots of uh, lots of good things happening in Burlington. Cool. All right. Uh, anything to chat about? Anything you'd like to chat about? Well, we have. Uh, speaking of property taxes, we do have the operating budget discussions coming up. So we've got six weeks of uh, discussions. The, orig the initial proposal, and it never, uh, it never stays this way in all my time, uh, this will be my 10th budget at the city, uh, you know, staff do a starting point and then council gets out our pencils and we, we shave off a percent or two. Uh, so the initial proposal is a 4.99% city when blended with region and uh, uh, education taxes results in about a 2.8% tax increase. So not bad. Uh, we can do better. And so I've asked uh, staff, I did a motion last week supported by council to ask staff to uh, come back with some options that would shave a percent off of that, which would get us below two and a half percent. Okay. So watch for that. Our, uh, you know, there's a lot of sort of research and dialogue happening right now behind the scenes, but we will have a, uh, we had a kickoff discussion last week we will have another major budget meeting on the 23rd of february uh where we that's that's when we'll start to you know move motions and uh add or cut or you know 
get it where we need to get it and approve it on March 3rd. Awesome. Anything else? I, I th it sounds like your dog wants to go for a walk, <laughs> and I think you want to put on your arm. Your arm's probably getting I already, I already took him out. He he has to say hello to his way of saying hello to everybody who comes by. So yeah. I always know when the mail is here. I know if anyone's ordered takeout, <laughs> and I know when my neighbors are walking their dogs. <laughs> Any, anything else or? No, that's no? Uh, okay. that, that's a wrap. That's a, all right. Full, Thirty minutes full anyway. lid, as they say. Yeah. All right, Take I'll care. see you. Okay. Take care. Bye. Bye, Khaled.